Coming up this week on Ralph and Vicky's Archer's Choice. That was absolutely crazy. That's the closest I've ever been to a bull elk. I can't explain how excited I am right now. I'm ready for this. I've been ready for this. And I'll tell you what, if it ends on the first day, I'm going to be the happiest customer you ever have. All of his animals were just absolutely amazing. I hear you and my dad have an yeah, interesting right here, here. Uh, relationship. <laughs> hey, it's me. And Case is in Florida. My parents aren't here, so this week Case and I, are kind of a big deal. We're kind of we're kind of leading the show this week. I feel a little bit special. But we're heading out to Utah with Curl Ranch Outfitters with Mr. Clint Curl. We got Greg and Scotty as our guides, and hopefully we're gonna put down some elk. We're gonna kick some butt. That's what I'm hoping at least. So let's get going. I'm RJ. Case is in Florida, slacking off like normal. But but this is the Archer's Choice. Well, we're just about to hit Utah, as you can tell, and uh, we're gonna have a good week at KRO. We are. We're headed out to KRO. We're only about 80 miles yeah, from there, and we'll go and see if we knock down a bull and a cow elk. Mm -hmm. So, I'll race to Utah. Once we finally got out there, it was just unbelievably beautiful over Bear Lake, the little town there looking through all the mountains, unless I call them hills out there, depending on who you are. <laughs> it was just incredible. Well, we're here at KRO. Casey and I are getting sighted in, making sure our bows are still on. We just arrived here a little bit ago, got all set up, and uh, we're getting ready for this afternoon's first hunt. Yeah. Time to see if, our, uh, see if our bows are still on. Yeah. But, uh, I'll let you go first, so I got a knock oh, yeah. game for it. One thing I will admit is I will never get tired of shooting with Case because it's always a blast, no matter what we're doing, whether it be <laughs> shooting back at home to practice for a hunt or just shooting around for fun, planking, whatever it is, or even if we're on the hunt and actually just making sure we're good, we're good to go because you never know, but it's always a blast and I swear I'll never get tired of it. Finally meeting Mr. Clint and Mr. Greg and Mr. Scotty, it was just, we just knew right away that we were gonna have a blast. They're absolutely amazing people. Never been on a hunt that ended on the first day. And I'll tell you what, if it ends on the first day, I'm gonna be the happiest customer you guys gonna have all year. Before the afternoon sit, the crew fills up on a delicious meal. At Curl Ranch Outfitters, they pride themselves in hearty home cooked meals. And of course, large portions. All right, well, this is our first afternoon out in Utah. Case and I just warmed up. We're all we're all dialed in, ready to go. And uh, he's going for a cow, I'm going for my first bull. And I am unbelievably excited. Greg and them just pulled up. We're about getting ready, we're about to go right now, I believe. And uh, hopefully we're gonna knock him down tonight. That'd be freaking awesome. Let's get going.
as you see behind me to my left, we got a watering hole. Scott was telling us, um, pretty far of a poke to the opposite side of the pond. It's about 70 yards, probably won't shoot nothing unless it's about 50. Up close, it's only about 30 yards, so now it's just a waiting game. We got about four hours until it gets dark, so we got plenty of time and hopefully something comes in. Part of what keeps the Archer's Choice crew coming back to Curl Ranch Outfitters year after year is the wide variety of game. It is not uncommon to see several species of animals throughout a single sit. So we're coming out of the last little bit of light we had this afternoon. This is our uh, first sit, and uh, it got a little bit cold this afternoon. But it uh, started out a little bit slow when we saw a couple of mule deer. Uh, went about three or four hours without seeing anything, and we just happened to look behind us, and uh, a moose came in. And it was mine and Brandon's first moose we've ever seen, so that was really cool. And then right after that, the, the woods just lit up, and uh, mule deer started showing up. and. Uh, one thing we're hunting, which was a cow elk, didn't come out, but we got plenty more days, so we're gonna come up in the same spot tomorrow morning. Hopefully our luck will change. We get set up, I was with Chad this week, Brandon was with Case, and it was just unbelievable just to be able to sit out into a tree. We sat there for the entire morning. It was a very slow morning, and unfortunately we didn't hear anything or see anything, but hopes were still high. Meanwhile, the activity has also been low for Case at the same water hole he hunted over last night. So we just got down to the stand for our first morning hunt, and we're gonna head back down the hill. It's probably about a half a mile walk, so we got a pretty good hike in front of us. While RJ and Case are heading back from the morning hunt empty-handed, they are still able to enjoy the majestic mountaintop view overlooking Lake Town in the scenic Bear Lake, the second largest natural freshwater lake in all of Utah. Back at the lodge, Clint is excitedly awaiting with one of his favorite toys. So it's our uh, second afternoon back out. So uh, we're going to change it up a little bit. RJ is going to a spot where his mom had a big bull wallowing underneath a tree stand. And I am going to, I believe is Ralph's favorite, favorite spot. And they've had trail camera pictures of about 30 cows in this one little watering hole. So feeling pretty good about this afternoon. So we'll see how it works. Now in the stand for afternoon two, RJ is optimistic for some activity, but there is no sign of elk so far. Case is sitting in one of Ralph's favorite spots, the K-1 blind, which overlooks a large water hole. Historically, activity has always been high at this location, and before you know it, animals start coming in.
finish it up this afternoon. And uh, we saw one bull elk come in. And uh, it's kind of funny because I have a cow tag and RJ has a bull tag. And uh, <laughs> the bull just ended up walking by me tonight. So we'll come back to the same spot in the morning. We've been having a bunch of pictures of cow elk here. So hopefully we'll get something done. As the morning of day three rolls in, it unfortunately does not bring any new elk activity. So the Archer's Choice crew decides to pay a visit to the spectacular Bear Lake. In the middle of the day, going swimming, like the clearest lake in the world, it seems like, and then going elk hunting in hours. Three, two. Often called the Caribbean of the Rockies for its intense turquoise blue water, Bear Lake is a natural freshwater lake on the Idaho-Utah border. About 109 square miles in size, it is split almost equally between the two states. All right, you wanna go back to camp then? Yeah, we better get ready for Alpine. Sounds yeah. good. So we just got back in the same spot we were this morning. Uh, heard a bunch of bulls bugling, heard a couple of cows calling in, in the edge of the woods up here. So it's uh, got really hot today. The sun's high in the sky, but I got a really good feeling about this afternoon hunt. I'm super excited. So we'll see what comes in. So we're going to this blind that they call K1. And from what I understand, it's Ralph's favorite blind. And I know why now. You know, we're into the hunt probably about an hour and a half and all of a sudden we hear an elk bugle. I'm like, hey, that's pretty cool. You know, I never heard one bugle before. And, you know, about 10 minutes later, one bugled and it sounded like he was right next to us. And I happened to look up and it looked like 500 elk were running towards us on top of this ridge. And, you know, I got my bow ready. I'm getting all pumped up. And all I needed was one, you know, cow elk to come in and stand broadside for me. But every time that happened, you know, I'd get ready to shoot. And another cow would walk behind that cow and I'd have to hold off or one would have a calf. Or, you know, I'd draw a bag getting ready to shoot, and Brandon would be like, hey, hold on, you know, I ain't got, the, I ain't got an angle right. And, uh, you know, about that time, a big Mac Daddy bull comes out, and, you know, he's in full rut, and it starts running these cows everywhere. And, you know, I've never seen anything like this. He was in full rut. It was awesome. And, of course, you know, me having a cow tag, the bull walks up 20 yards, stands broadside of me, and basically sticks his tongue out at me. I'm like, man, if only RJ was here with me right now, everything would be perfect. But you know, hey, there's always next year, and I'm gonna try for that bull tag. That was absolutely crazy. That's the closest I've ever been to a bull elk. This incredible encounter with the herd is a breath of fresh air for the crew after having minimal activity the past few days. Case is especially satisfied getting to experience Utah's beloved state animal, the Rocky Mountain Elk. The population of elk is now flourishing with more record harvest than any other Western state. As the evening hunt draws to a close, the crew is thankful for the opportunity to take in the wonderful creation all around them, making memories that will truly last a lifetime. Well, we're heading over to Mr. Clint's right now, and uh, we heard that he has quite the collection of animals. So, we have quite quite the journey. It's a full, uh, probably half mile, maybe, to get there. But I'm, I'm excited to see all of his animals. How are you guys? Oh, I'm excited. Cool. We're almost there already. I feel like I'm walking into a jungle. Oh. Don't kill anybody. <laughs> Oh my gosh, these are beautiful. And he had two beautiful, big, gorgeous white dogs. Oh. And I mean, these, these are like the dogs that you dream of because they're just, they're just beautiful. Oh. They're perfectly white and they're the happiest things you'll ever <laughs>
<laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> Literally, mini horses. Oh, there. The horses were gorgeous, including the donkey in there. And it was just, they're just beautiful horses. All of his animals were just absolutely amazing. Man, that's cool. Never seen a white peacock before. Elvis is gonna come blasting right in. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello there. Now this is RJ. He's Ralph's son, Elvis. Yeah. I hear you and my dad have a an interesting right uh, relationship. An interesting relationship indeed. Ever since okay. meeting Ralph a few years ago, <laughs> Elvis took a liking to the Cianzarulos and looks forward to their return year after year. <laughs> I wonder if this is good cover scent. Elvis is a very interesting character. He has Berserk Lama Syndrome, and he'll, he'll eyeball you, and then he'll spit on you. <laughs> okay, it's been close to five minutes, I'm good now. <laughs> <laughs> I think the cutest ones, though, were the two little raccoons that love marshmallows. They're probably the, not only the biggest, but the nicest and most adorable raccoons I've ever seen. They were just adorable. Ever since he was 10 years old, Clint has always had a passion for animals. For the past 40 years, he has been providing a home for these critters at the Curl Ranch, many of which are rescue animals. Now that the crew has experienced the farm to the fullest, it's time to head to the woods to hopefully fill a tag. So this, this afternoon we're gonna change spots, Mr. Greg says. So we're going to K1 where Case had seen it all, like the whole herd of elk. So we have high hopes again. So we get set into K1. We're both sitting on the ground, well, in a chair on the ground this time, rather than in a stand. And we wait. We just wait. And finally, we hear a bugle. The sun's starting to go down. It's getting darker and darker. And we're starting to get nervous because we can hear them, but nothing's coming in. And then as soon as Chad and I say that it's, it's about time that it's too dark, they just start coming in. RJ can make out a cow and two bulls across the water hole. But with darkness having set in, there are unfortunately no shot opportunities. While the stars didn't align today for RJ, there is still one more day of hunting left at KRO. Well, this is our last day here. This is our last afternoon. This is our last sit. Let's, uh, let's get this done. We're sitting there and everything's quiet. And all of a sudden, we start behind us, we start hearing, ooh, ooh. We're, we're, our hearts are racing. We don't know what's gonna happen next. And I mean, this moose just runs right next to us and goes right down to the water hole. Didn't even see us. The rotting bull moose is soon joined by a cow. The bull then puts on quite a show. Anytime a moose bull smells the urine of a cow, a lip curl can be expected. Also known as the phlegm in response, the whole event can last roughly a minute and is performed by a wide range of mammals. The behavior facilitates the transfer of pheromones and other scents into the front of the mouth. But the show is over for the crew as the two moose make their way back into the woods wrapping up an unforgettable hunt with Curl Ranch Outfitters. That was amazing. And I'm, I appreciate my mom and dad for letting me go out there with Case, knowing how dangerous, we, how dangerous we are by ourselves. And we had Brandon and Chad with us. So maybe they helped us, maybe they made it worse. You never really know. But thank you everybody at KRO for allowing this to happen. We unfortunately didn't walk away with an animal, but the absolute opportunities and camaraderie in camp, in a car, wherever we were, was just nonstop. We were laughing continuously, and it was just absolutely amazing experience. So thank you guys, everyone there, Mr. Clint, Mr. Greg, Mr. Scotty. We really appreciate it, both Case and I, even though he's still back down in Florida, slacking off again. <laughs> but thank you guys very much. So we'll see you guys next week. Same time, same channel, right here on The Archer's Choice.